is my action camera. You know, I bought it yesterday. And, um, well, I'm going to wash the dishes now. Hold on. Let me see where my phone is. I'll place it right here. It's this time at the moment, so I still have, and I'm going to, I'm going outside soon, but I promise to do the dishes first, so. Okay, let me see where I can place this. Um, guys it's the first time using this thing yes fine. Mm -hmm. oh. yes I hope you can see everything now I'm not sure but You know, in my previous video, I've talked about, um, what was it again? Yes, I've talked about violence against men, and also talked about the uselessness of, you know, self-defense. And I already gave some examples in that video. And in this video, I want to continue about, you know, why those that are born again, I'm talking to believers on why we don't need any self-defense. You see? Because what is self-defense actually? Well, the word defense means that you want to you wanna prohibit harm from happening. However, a defense is a neutral term. So it can, it can either apply to something good or to something evil. So you can defend something, but it can, can be something evil that you're protecting. So, protection, uh, so defense doesn't always have to be something positive. You see, you can also defend a lie. And if you're living a lie, okay, then defending a lie is basically self-defense because self is much of the, the self-image you're fabricating of yourself is a lie. So basically, self-defense then means defending the lie. And you know, Every form of self-defense is the defense of a life. Why? Because the basic idea of self-defense is, is that the, what you have here on earth, the resources that are in your hands, that's all you got. And that when someone and if someone comes, you know, and take away those resources, then you're in trouble. So you need to defend the resources that you are secure. So self-defense. It's basically it's a, it's, a, it's a belief and it's rooted in pride. It's rooted in the idea that God cannot be trusted, that God's going to defend me. So now I have to defend myself. I have to take the responsibility of protector upon myself. And this is an evil thing. Because first of all, you cannot defend yourself. You can't. Because it, the moment you try to defend yourself, you bring yourself and others in trouble. You see? And um, there's another thing. When you want to defend yourself, you're not, you know, interested in glorifying God, nor in proclaiming His kingdom, nor about witnessing about the Lord Jesus Christ. No. When you're defending yourself, you know, you're basically glorifying self, self-effort. And the Lord doesn't want us to do that. Listen, 
There is no harm that can befall you that the Lord cannot fix in his time. And there is no loss that he cannot resurrect. Just read the book of, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. You see, there the Lord brought the prophet Ezekiel to a valley filled with boats. You see, in, in those times, when, people, when armies fought war, they did it with swords, with spears, you know. They often went to valleys or to those hidden or, or to those open fields to fight the battles. You see? And there was one of such valleys where there were dead soldiers. However, the valleys were de had already decomposed, so you only saw bones. The flesh was gone, the organs were gone. It was a horrible scene, okay? And the Lord asked the prophet Ezekiel, Son of man, do bones live? And Ezekiel was telling the Lord, Lord, you know it, I, I know. And the Lord commanded Ezekiel to prophesy against the bones. Did you ever talk and commanded dry bones, skeletons? But the Lord told Ezekiel to do that. Ezekiel did it. And after the Lord, after, I mean, after Ezekiel spoke in the name of the Lord, what the Lord commanded him to do, you know, organs and flesh began to grow on the skeletons, and the skeletons that were incomplete became incomplete, and all the bodies of those of deceased soldiers became whole again. But there was some life, they were, it, it, it was only the bodies became whole again. They, were, they, still, they still didn't live. Then the Lord commanded Ezekiel to command the spirit to go into them. And just as Ezekiel did, as the Lord commanded them, a wind blew and all the bodies rose up and you, you, you could see a mighty army. What did this say, people? If there are dry circumstances in your life, I don't care whether it's in your sexual life or in your, in your economical life, in your finances, I don't care, okay? Where they, they will have dry places in your life from time to time, okay? When there's a dry place in your life, speak against it in the name of Jesus, according to his word, according to God's will. God's will is that you will have life and life in abundance. So if you have a certain area of your life that lacks life, that's dry, speak against it. So, you know, the Lord never told us to improve yourself. Lord, the, never the Lord Jesus said improve yourself. Never did the Lord Jesus says change. The Lord Jesus didn't even command people to change. The Lord never told us to take action to make things better. He, told, he, he never told us to improve self or to defend self or to, you know, cherish self. He told us to crucify self, to surrender ourselves completely unto Him and trust Him. Okay? That's what we are supposed to do. We ought to walk by faith, not by sight. And that's the problem with self-defense, is that whenever you choose, because self-defense is a mindset. See? And so, whenever you have the mindset of self-defense, you're basically walking by sight. Walking by what you see. What you see may, may be real, and it's true that it's a true fact that what you see is there. But what you're believing in, self-defense, isn't true. You need to think about that for a moment. Okay? So, back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel didn't have, you know, the power to make those bones live. The Lord has. But what did God do? God told him, the human being, to have faith and to speak God's word into the circumstance and things change. And you know, guys, enough about self-defense now. I hope the I hope the message is clear now. I'm going to talk about faith and manifestation right now. No, I'm not into the secret that teaches people that your thoughts will impact the whole universe. No, I'm not into that bullshit, okay? The truth is, people, there are only two forms of power available, either God's grace or demonic power. 
So I'm not going into the money power now. I'm going to God's grace right now. The Lord Jesus, because Jesus is God, he told the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy against the dry bones. About your circumstance now, maybe you're in a financial difficulty. Did you speak against the financial difficulty? I mean, for real, did you do it? Okay, some of you may feel lonely because you don't have social con many social contacts. You don't, people are rejecting you. You know, you don't, you, you feel lonely. Did you speak against the loneliness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you do it? Because many people, you know, are unfortunately some believers, but I won't focus, but, I'll, but what I'm telling now has more to do with unbelievers, but I'm mentioning it because we that are born again, we believers should not take over the ways of the world. We should not imitate the ways of the heathen. We should become separate from the world, says the Lord. So that's why I'm going to sh that's why I'm going to talk about some of the behaviors of the heathen that we shouldn't take over. What heathen often do is they talk about the problems that they face in life, and what else they uh, they claim the problems for themselves. Now you need to hear me well about this. First of all. Human beings live on Earth, right? It's obvious, we live on Earth. And we make use of the resources of Earth. Who is the owner of the Earth again? Hmm, God, the Lord Jesus, alright? So, we don't own nothing. That's one. Secondly, the Lord Jesus commanded us to obey Him and to don't worry about anything. And not, and not even to worry or think about the day of tomorrow. That's another thing the Lord Jesus said. So we, as human beings, we only manage and make use of things down here, but we don't own them. So everything down here must be used in accordance to the will of God, who created the earth. And as long as we do that, we are in, we are in peace. When people choose to do, go their way, their humanistic, self-way, trouble arise. Because now, People have to take care of themselves instead of, you know, give themselves over to God, allow God to rule in their lives, and they take and they take care of each other. You see? So let's say, for example, you need to pay a bill. For example, you need to pay rent for your home. Whose problem is it that you have to pay rent? Well, the world will say you, because you're the one living in the house. You're the one that needs house to live in. Now, hold on a minute. Since when does you, do human beings rent houses? Just think about it. Where did, did it come from? You know, when you live in urban areas, they build these buildings where you have you know, accommodations above each other. And you have one rich guy that so-called owns that building, and in order to maintain the building, he needs to pay money to maintain it. And that's why you pay your rent to help the one that owns the building to maintain the building, and in exchange you live in it. However, so if you're temporarily in that circumstance that you stay in a building, and you you contribute to the maintenance of the building by paying rent, okay, there's, there's nothing simple in that. However, it is something simple to make that place your home. This is where I'm going to settle. See, that's a problem. Why? Because the whole earth, every country, every landscape, everything under heaven, under this sky, it is your home. You see, the, the Lord appointed the whole earth. For mankind. So when you, a human being, decides to make one certain place your home, your everything, you just sit. You step outside of the grace of God, and you step out, you went outside of the Father's house, you've left the protection of God's provisions when you do that. So now, you don't trust upon God anymore, because God said the whole earth is at your disposal. But no, you follow the teachings of men that says, no, this place is not my home. And you do that based upon pride. 
and now you have sorrow and worries because you have to maintain your place. Because now you walk into the lie that you have, are responsible for your own life. And now stress arises. Well, when you trust the Lord, the Lord will always, you know, open a way for you to pay rent because it's the Lord's responsibility to pay your rent and things, and He will and He will find a way to give you the resources to do it. And you only stay in that building as long as God wants it. When God wants you to move on with your life, you ought to leave the building and follow the Lord. And sometimes, you know, we want to stay in that little comfort zone. So what does the Lord do? The Lord doesn't want to have you there, so the Lord will cause, you know, some issues in your finances so that you will have to leave that place. You see, that's the thing, you, you see. Often we make certain places sacred to us, and we shouldn't do that. You know? So, about, you know, that, that rent stuff, you can apply it to everything. See? Often we seek the approval of, you know, humans, the approval of men, instead of enjoying the, let's say, instead of enjoying the love of God. That's why the Lord tells us, do not love the world, do not love this world system, nor the illusions of this world system. Because when you can, when you are filled with the love of the world, with the lust of the world, you know, God's love cannot abide in you. Alright? And making an apartment your home, or making a mansion your own, I don't care how great and how huge that building is, I don't care if the building is made of diamonds and precious stones. The Lord appointed you upon the earth and upon the whole earth. So the whole earth is your home. And you should feel at home everywhere on earth. To restrict yourself only to one certain place because that pleases other people. That's sin. You know, we shouldn't fear other people at all. God is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. So if you have to be afraid of someone, you should be feared not. But if God said, fear not, trust me. But what do you do? You leave the grace of God and His provision, His protection to police men who don't even care about you and who can't deliver you. Man. See, you know, fellow believers, these, that's the way of the world, you know. Restricting yourself out of fear for, for revenge from others to please others and to remain in one place. That's how everything in this world functions. However, that's the world's problem, not, that, not us. We've been delivered from the world, remember? We belong to the kingdom, kingdom of God now. So, we should do things the way the Lord wants us to do things. Okay, another next. So, if you have financial difficulties now, think against the financial difficulty. Okay? Don't go into a rant. Okay, listen, if you need a job or you need something to do in exchange, trust the Lord in it, and when you are active, the Lord will bring you to, to the solutions. You see? Believing is, having faith is being active in the Lord. In the Lord. I don't, uh, but what many do is, many are laboring in slavery, trying to make a living. And that is not God's will for you. Alright? Don't do that. And the reason why many of you are making a living, I'm going to tell and reveal to you why, right, is because you chose to accept the limitations and condemnation of the world. You've accepted the curse of the world and now you're paying for it. That's why most of you people are making a living. That's why most of you people are stuck at jobs from 9 to 5. You're stuck with that only like 35 days in a year free for yourself. You're stuck at the load of work. You're stuck with a boss who doesn't like you. You're stuck with colleagues that don't believe in God and that, that are talking negative about you. You're stuck at one place in a vicious cycle every day of your life. You don't want to be there. You don't want to wake up Monday. You want to enjoy life and um, preaching your purpose, but you're stuck at a job. Why are you stuck at a job? You know, 
it's not because you didn't work very hard or because life has been unfair to you well life is you know the world is unfair to you that's true but the reason why you're in debt still now is because you've accepted the curses and the condemnation from the world you accepted the condemnation and then because you accepted the common condemnation now the curses are active in your life or don't you realize that every time every time that you accept a way of the world is basically accepting condemnation and when you accept condemnation you are giving Satan and all these demons access to your life. Oh, you don't hear me now, eh? I'm going to repeat this. Every time, you can see me here, every time you accept condemnation in your life, you activate Satan and all the principalities and powers of the demonic here on to, uh, to, to work in, against you. Oh man, you guys don't hear me. I'm going to repeat this because many of you have hard ears. You need to open your ears now because I'm saying very loud. Every single time, every single time you accept condemnation in your life, it doesn't matter how small in which area it is, any form of condemnation is a way of the world, it's a way of heathen. Every time you accept condemnation, you block the blessing of God for in your life, you leave the protection for, of, and provision of God and you are open and vulnerable for all kinds of demonic attacks and curses and all kinds of human abuse. You are trapped unto yourself. That's why the Lord said, be separate from the world. However, what do many do? Many seek. Many believers pay too much attention to what their fellow humans say about them. Listen, and the reason why many of you, fellow believers, are doing this is because you don't want to be the reason why someone goes to hell. You don't want to offend somebody so that someone decides I'm not going to follow the Lord because of that. Now listen, listen carefully. You're not responsible when someone goes to hell. You hear me? You're not. The one that's responsible when someone goes to hell, is the one going to hell. Because the Lord Jesus paid it all at Calvary, he finished it all, he has saved the whole human race. Those of the human race that refuse to, to, to receive what God has restored for them, they're the ones choosing to follow Satan and to share in Satan's doom. And so that has nothing to do with you. Even if you were the most horrible Christian ever, you know, and you hurt so many unbelievers, they still have no right to refuse the, the God's provision for them. That's the Lamb of God that was slain at the cross for their, for their salvation. Because they should listen to the Lord, and they should follow the Lord, not you. Even if you, as a Christian, are, are a very bad testimony, you are still safe anyway, and they have no excuse. They can never say to the Lord, well, those Christians were so hypocritical, that's why I didn't believe you. Listen, fellow believer, don't fall into that trap of unbelievers. Unbelievers that choose to harden themselves, they have chosen the mark of the beast. And they are the only ones responsible for going to hell. Okay? So don't take curses into your life to please unbelievers. From, don't think that when you accept a curse in your life, you will prohibit unbelievers from hardening themselves. They have already hardened themselves. Okay? So if they want to perish, let them perish. I mean it, people. I mean it, dear brothers and sisters, we need to wake up. We need to stop trying to please men and please God all the time. I mean it. The reason why many Christians are living a defeated life is because we open ourselves for the money of curses. We accept too many things from the world. We accept too many stuff. stuff. And I'm glad that there are, that are Christians today that are rising and they are, they, are, they, they, they are realizing what's going on and they are being delivered. I'm grateful for that. You see, let me talk about my life, for example, because I don't want to keep things too abstract, okay? I want to use real life examples also. You can read about biblical examples, that's fine. I'm going to give you an example from my own life. I grew up in the ghetto. The name, oh dear, 
anyway the neighbourhood in which i lived as a child they were all ghettos. oh on curacao till i was two years old my parents and my rest family lived in buena vista. now buena vista is a little village near willemstad on curacao it's still a ghetto to this day. we went to hoogvliet my mom lived in a house of a family member for a while then she went to her own house hoogvliet tarrewijk slinge lombardije all of them ghettos. at 15 16 years old we moved to schiedam i played in schiedam also also a ghetto and now you know, I went to I went living with one of my brothers, you know, in uh, Vladingen, but I'm, I'm often here with my mom. And you know, Spekinese, where I live, also a ghetto. Yes, it's a ghetto. And and the thing is, in the Netherlands, as some as a foreigner, often you're placed in a ghetto. Even if you make a lot of money, often you refuse to buy, you know. Spanish houses, okay, but all these things are happening around here, so uh, I'm just mentioning it anyway. Since I was a kid, okay, lack of money was present in our lives. I didn't approve it because what I noticed was that okay, the, I grew up and people say you need to have money to buy things. I knew what buying was and selling, even as a little kid, you learn that. But I thought about wait a minute. It's just a piece of paper with ink on it. So why do we need a piece of paper to survive on Earth? Everybody can take a piece of paper and draw something on it and say this is valuable. So why should a few people on Earth have a right to make a certain papers and they decide who that is valuable? I never approved of it. While growing up, I asked questions to teachers about it. I read books of history and I couldn't find any justification for it. And people always say, yeah, this is just how the way it is. Well, I grew up, you know, I oh, all right, money exists, okay, that's what, that's a man-made invention, so I have to do with it. So, let me just find a way to get as much of it, you know, just because it's needed. That's the only thing. The thing is, the, when I became born again, the Lord began to deliver me and everything. As you know, I often asked the Lord to build my finances because I didn't see another way that I could do with them. You see, the Lord didn't cause me to have a, a big sum of money on my bank account. The Lord didn't do that. But, you know, I've noticed that, you know, past four years, you know, when I'm a student right now, I had, you know, I have two laptops now. I had three, one I gave to my mom. I had like five different phones if I can and I, at the moment I have two phones right now I have two no three cameras also I've had two both digital cameras one broke I've been to Japan in South Korea Portugal I've been and last uh, month uh, in, the, in uh, August 2014 I went to Austria and Slovakia also and um, furthermore, on Facebook, I have a few thousand on Facebook and other social media all to combined together. I have a few thousand people that follow me, you know. I also have a YouTube channel now with uh, about 670 videos. So, when I, I begin to think about, you know, wait a minute, I'm not cursed. Poverty has no impact upon me. The Lord did not took a large sum of money and put it on me and said, okay, now you're rich. No, the Lord showed me that he is my treasure and that he knows what's best for me and that his grace is sufficient for me. Money is a human invention. God can use it, but it's God's grace that works for me. So I don't desire money because I have the grace of God, something much better than money. For example, and how, it, how, how come that God's blessing is manifesting? First of all, is God doing it, not me? I'm not taking credit for anything. We have to have faith and by obeying Christ, that's one. And it also implies not accepting the condemnation of the world. You see? And I did that by 